Pisces. Welcome to your December 2017 Astro Update. Pisces, I think that this is a really good time for you, actually, because the 10th and 11th houses are really featured for you in December. The 10th house is the house of career, okay? It's at the top of the chart. It's your reputation in the world, how other people see you in terms of you utilizing your talents and making a name for yourself. The 11th house is the house of hopes and wishes and your friendships and group associations. And it's your long-term goals. And to me, these two houses are very much linked. And so Venus on the first of the month goes into that 10th house. Now Venus can bring money with her as well as harmony, charisma, um, charm. And so being in that 10th house, it can really give you an advantage if you're looking for a, if you're trying to impress a particular employer, or if you are currently employed, you're trying to um, impress your higher ups, because you will have a lot of um, charisma. And this could benefit you financially, obviously, but definitely in terms of of getting ahead in terms of getting a promotion and things like that. But then Venus goes into the 11th house and that's on Christmas day. And that could be a situation where you have money to be able to make your dreams come true. Something that you've always wanted to do comes to pass in terms of having the finances. Now, can I tell you how that might happen? No. But they always say, it's none of your business how these things happen. It's just like if you make space for it in your consciousness, it makes it more likely to occur. But I really like um, the places that Venus is going in December because the fact that Venus is a source of attraction means that you can attract a partner or you can attract money. And um, you think about the law of attraction. The law of attraction is all about your vibe um, giving you something of an equal vibe. So if you're really in that aspirational mode, you may meet somebody who shares your passions, who wants to go in the same direction that you're going. And that's the best type of partner, isn't it? I, I, I would add too that with Venus in the 11th house, you may meet somebody, um, through a group of friends. Like I'm talking about a romantic partner. So on the third of the month, Mercury goes retrograde in Sagittarius, which is your 10th house, um, as I stated. And um, let's say that you were interviewing for a job. You might be in some kind of negotiation. Um, well, it doesn't even have to be that. It could be that you are hoping to get a, uh, a promotion and you're going back and forth with the, with your current employer, or it could be that you hear back from a place that you applied to. And so Mercury is retrograde from the 3rd until the 22nd, goes direct right before Christmas. And on the same day that Mercury goes retrograde, there's a full moon in Gemini. And this is in your, um, this is, in your fourth house of home and family, the opposite house of that 10th house. So because there is an opposition between this full moon and all of that activity in the 10th house, there may be some kind of issue regarding, um, let's say you have uh, been staying at home with your children, you may decide, okay, I'm going back to work. And that might be what that negotiation is with your career. You may be going back to a job that you had um, or a career that you had before, but I mean a particular workplace. And um, maybe you were on maternity leave 
or something along those lines. Maybe you worked there in the past and hey, maybe it was like a few years ago and now you're ready to go back into the workplace. Because full moons can bring endings and this is the house of home and family and you may be done with a certain phase of your life. Maybe you were spending, you know, raising your children when they were very young and you're going back into the workplace because there's a lot of emphasis on that 10th house. And that is uh, one of the reasons why, you know, you see that contrast between the fourth and the 10th houses is because the 10th house is the outer um, arena that relates to um, your position in the world, okay? And the home and family sector is a private area. It's not what everybody sees, okay? The the other thing that the fourth house can, can bring is that perhaps you're moving, perhaps you are selling a house or something along those lines, and it comes through at that time. Just be um, aware that this is the, the day of Mercury going retrograde. So if, for instance, you are selling a house, be prepared for there to be some possible things that need to still be ironed out because during a Mercury retrograde, it isn't advised to sign contracts of any kind. And Mercury tends to be about contracts and fourth house matters, if there's anything related to a house, there still may be things that you need to kind of um, look at in regards to that. But it doesn't mean that it's going to be something bad. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You, you don't have the luxury of waiting another month, you know, for Mercury to go out of its shadow and all that stuff. Uh, the realtor won't understand and they'll think you're kind of nuts. But um I just wanted to put it out there because it all depends on um, how much leeway you have. And so if you must sign, a, sign some type of contract, be sure that you are going uh, through it with a fine tooth comb and being very conscious of the fact that you're dealing with this astrological aspect. And I think you'll be fine. Um, but some people get very um, superstitious about uh, these things and they would rather not deal with them at that time and they may have the luxury to do so. So then on the 9th, we have Mars going into Scorpio. And for you, um, this is your ninth house, uh, Pisces, and this is a friendly angle to you, fellow water sign. Mars in the ninth house can indicate somebody who is taking some kind of a crash course at a university. Perhaps you are doing, or it could be a crash course uh, for yoga or some other kind of um, training that is compressed in a very short time. Maybe you're, you're uh, even at a retreat and you're just very busy um, yeah, Hatha yoga, where you're physically active, it could be you um, globe trotting, <laughs> because um, Mars is like that, that physical aspect, even and um, the ninth house can be foreign travel. So um, how that affects you, personally, will depend on the individual, I suppose. But you do have a new moon in Sagittarius, on the 18th, and this is in your 10th house again of career. So career matters are very much featured, as I said, and this is a new beginning. Some people will be starting a new position. The very next day you have Saturn going into your 11th house and actually uh, in the sign of Capricorn, by the way. So Saturn has been in that 10th house for two and a half years, Pisces. Some of you who know about astrology may have been very conscious of the fact that it was going into your 10th house and took full advantage of kind of anchoring your career at this in, you know, since 2015. Some of you may have just done so anyway without knowing what was happening. And some of you may feel like, oh man, why didn't I, you know, take advantage of this? Well, 
the 11th house is long-term goals. So anything that you didn't accomplish with your career, just look at your life in its totality. And I would say, especially when you have a new moon in Capricorn, which is happening on January 16th, plant seeds of intention regarding what you would like to accomplish with long range goals. And some of those will have absolutely nothing to do with career. They may have to do with the physical location you want to be in, who you want to be spending time with. The 11th house are friendships. Um, Saturn in the 11th house can really pare down your friendships. And that may sound like threatening to some people, but actually it can be quite nice because what a lot of times with Pisces, I find that your companions are really an important area to look at because you are a very impressionable sign. The people around you really affect you. And this can be for the good or not so much. Pisces is a mutable water sign. And if you know anything about programming water, I haven't read that book, that famous book by that doctor, what is his name? Uh, something like Hashimoto. I, I don't remember his name. But he did some, st they did some studies on water about um, the vibrations that we put on it that water is very impressionable and it can change its structure depending on um, the influence that is put upon it. And as a mutable water sign, which means that the mutability means that you're very changeable and the water means very impressionable, um, you know, you absorb vibrations and that makes you an, a natural empath and psychic. Um, you are being an empath, you can take on other people's vibrations without wanting to, and even knowing that you are doing so. And so, uh, keeping good company is highly, um, recommended because you are very tolerant. You are very, um, you are non-judgmental when it comes to other people. Now, of course, there are going to be those Pisces people who are going to be a little bit different than that. Not everybody is, is like that, but most Pisces people are very open to the personality traits of other people, even when they are not beneficial to the Pisces overall, you know? So if a person is highly, um, negative, you know, they're always complaining. They're always, um, having problems that can affect you adversely. And so this can be a time when you really find your tribe, so to speak, which are those people that nourish you and that they have your back and that you can have their back and, and you don't feel diminished uh, for it. Okay. And so Saturn brings that structure to your social circle, but also to your aspirations. And, um, you know, a lot of Pisces people are artistic. You never know about the things that you wish to accomplish that you think are just kind of, um, hobbies and you, they may turn into something that, um, you can actually make a living from as well. And then the sun goes into this 11th house a couple of days later on the 21st, which is the solstice. So um, you're going to, Pisces, you're going to be very much um, around the time of um, the solstice. You're going to be very um, uh, sociable and you may be dealing with... Um, a lot of people because Venus will be there on uh, Christmas day. And, um, you know, you may be seeing a lot of friends and just having a good time and thinking about those things that uh, matter to you. So I hope you enjoyed this Pisces. And if you would like a private reading, I do have 20% off of all of my readings 
through the end of December of 2017. Uh, the coupon code is JUPITER, and you just put that in, all caps. The link is below to my website. Otherwise, have an awesome holiday. Take care. Bye.